Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome to part 2 of this tutorial series. But let's skip the unnecessary long introductions since you are here to see some more details that I mentioned in the previous part. So let's jump right into it. The first part of the video will be a list of necessary tools to acquire since you certainly want to know how much everything costs in the end. In addition I will go into specific alternatives to my choices, specifically towards the proper crucible to use with this process. The second part explains everything related to bismuth slag or more specific bismuth oxide and why it can't be prevented while smelting bismuth. And the third part will show you how I process the materials before I fill my crucible properly. And after all this you will be ready for part 3. If you are reluctant to spend the money and just want to see the spectacle, it's fine. But even if you should be willing to try it for yourself after this part, I would suggest viewing it beforehand in order to see the whole process and in order to prevent any surprises when you have a go at it for yourself. First item on our list would be the proper container for our endeavor. I used this generic steel coal starter since it simply was too old after so many years and since it was designed for specifically those high temperatures which occur when burning charcoal, at least in comparison to those temperatures you can get by simply burning wood. You could also use other objects involved in grilling since it will withstand the heat. Another important factor to consider is the possibility to move your container outside in a well ventilated spot. Any inside location would be a sure recipe for chaos or even death since we will be handling molten metal and red hot charcoals with toxic fumes emanating from them. This is very dangerous, so think about it when you consider trying this for yourself, please. Finally, but no less important, is to mention that you can't use the tools afterwards for anything related to cooking, obviously. They will be useless for anything else in the future anymore. Only for another run, obviously, but not for anything else. Please don't do this. The second item would be something to crush the charcoals and the bismuth slag into fine dust. As you can see I use a mortar and pestle to do this, which could be considered quite expensive since I use it only for a task like this and not related to food or cooking in any way. Don't use these tools for both please. Next up would be protective gear. Please at least buy fire resistant gloves, but I would suggest protective eyeglasses and protective clothing to be on the safe side. Trust me. The last item you probably need to buy on this list would be a proper crucible. I suggest a steel one because special crucibles like the one I'm going to use deliberately will be destroyed by this method. Graphite crucibles are designed for special electric stoves or ovens. But in this case it will react with the charcoal and the result will be an oxidized crucible. How this looks will be visible in the third and fourth parts. Since the last two materials we require are already in our possession, at least the bismuth oxide I show here, this is still a lot of bismuth which is mixed in with the slag. You can go in and heat it up to extract that bit and after that you will be left with a grayish dust. But it can also take an orange to yellow hue when it's free from most other substances. But I will use this as an example. The other material would be charcoals in big enough quantity for this process to take place and in order to get mixed with the powdered bismuth oxide. When you don't have charcoal on hand I fear that that would be another item you would need to buy in order to do this. In the second part of this video we will be discussing bismuth oxide so if you are already know about it, you can skip to part 3, so I won't waste your time. Anyway, let's begin. What you see here 
is a bismuth tile I poured in the past. The colors you see are different hues which reach from yellow gold over green down to deep blue hues. These colors represent a thin layer of bismuth oxide on the top of the cooled down bismuth surface. The color indicates the thickness of the layer. And these layers are created while bismuth cools in fresh air which contains oxygen. And this combination creates the oxidized layer. The thickness depends on how long the bismuth takes to cool down in that specific spot. The thickness increases the longer it takes to cool down, which determines the final color of the area. That is why you can't prevent it from happening. But in this case, we obviously want it to happen. Because when I spin this around, you can see what happens when bismuth cools down without access to oxygen in the air. There will be no colors whatsoever. And the silver color you see is the color bismuth normally has without the oxide layer on top. So yeah, not very satisfying in comparison to the other side. So our goal is to remove the oxygen with our method. And that is why we need everything mentioned above. We reduce the bismuth oxide back into pure bismuth. All the bismuth slag which gathers at the top of the molten metal is a combination of different substances but mostly oxidized bismuth. A possible way to minimize this oxidation is to minimize the surface area exposed on the top. So the bigger the area that is exposed, the more bismuth oxide will be generated. Keep that in mind when choosing the containers and crucibles you want to use when doing those tasks. The third and last part of this video is a short demonstration how I begin to pulverize the bismuth oxide with the mortar and pestle. And when I'm finished, I add charcoal pieces into the mix and grind both materials together till both are fine dust. Afterwards, I fill the dust mixture into my crucible and top it off with charcoal pieces to prevent any oxygen from getting into the crucible while the reaction is happening. Now we finally finished the second part of this tutorial series and I hope you liked what you saw. The third and fourth part will be coming up soon. But since the process will take hours to finish, I'm not sure how to record the footage. I consider streaming the whole thing, but if I do so, I will give a notice with a scheduled date and time for anyone who wants to join. So if that would be something you would like to see, show your support and subscribe so you definitely won't miss it when it's happening. But without further ado, I wish you a wonderful day.